Hello guys and welcome to a new Stead Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hey everyone, Attack Power here, excited for more Steel Division 2 fun. In this video we have for you game one of the best of three between Ghosty and Mamil in the semi-finals of the Steel Division uh, League uh, Division 1 Season 11 playoffs. Today they are playing on Breast West and on our left in the red team we have Ghosty playing with the 78 Sturm on the Axis side with the Balanced Deployment type. And on our right, in the blue team, we have Mamil playing with the 17th SS on the Axis side with the um, Juggernaut Deployment type. Almost forgot what it was. But yeah, if you guys uh, want to check out the quarterfinals that haven't been shown on my channel, make sure to go check them out on Attack Power's channel. If you're already on Attack Power's channel, that's great. But uh, yeah, what do you have to say about these divisions, Mr. Attack Thanks. Power? Thanks for the shout out, Vulcan. So yeah, definitely interesting here. So 17th SS, quantifiably one of the best Axis divisions. Really odd again that it's not being banned. Really odd that he chose Juggernaut, but I know what happened. Ghosty picked Balance, he picked Juggernaut. Okay, makes sense. Uh, Breast West is a terrible map. It's very unfair. It's heavily slanted to red side. That hill gives you a really strong overview of the entire map. It's it's a very strong position. Um, but 78 Sturm, an interesting choice here to... So I guess... It, it would appear that, what, Mamil picked first and Ghosty counterpicked with 78th Sturm. I'm not sure. I mean, both are solid divisions. 17th much stronger than 78th overall. And 78th is actually really bad against, like, armored car rush and stuff. So it that's it's just all very strange. But, yeah, good divisions overall. Strong infantry. Better CQC out of Mamil's deck, out of 17th SS. But, um, yeah, bet stronger long range out of Ghosties in terms of infantry, which Breast West a lot, is a lot of. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Let's have a quick look at what they're getting down. So, for Ghosty on the left-hand side at the top, he has the Panzerstreck Begleit T26. It might look a bit weird that he's not placing those on the road, but he's going to travel to that road on the top side so that he can get positioning on the high ground. Uh, then we have further down the Sturmschützen, the Begleitgren, the Schützenführer with the Stug 3 at 2 Vet, the Pack 40 MG42 and IG18. Uh, further down, MG42, Sturmschützen, Flak 43, Marda 2 and Begleit. And on the very bottom side, we've got the uh, Flammenwerfer team and the Panzer T26. Up on the top right, for Mamil, we have a bunch of Flamers, backed up by SS Legionary, with the Pioneer Fjorda in there, some Volksdeutscher, and some 233 SBWs. Very nice. Um, we've got the SBW 233 further down, with the Flammenwerfer Double Panzergren, uh, a couple of Volksdeutscher to hold the center, and on the very bottom side, more of these armored cars, um, the Alfklatter coming in the 222, the SBW 233, we got the Legionary, Panzergrenz, and a Marda 3. So, pretty nice setup. Both sides going for these sort of cheaper tank destroyers and uh, supported by plenty of early game infantry. Yeah, 78 Sturm's big struggle. It doesn't really have light AT. That's his big issue. So, that's why it struggles so much against armored cards and things. And that's why I'm assuming Emil's really going all in. He's got five, six SPW 233s out, five SPW 233s out, which is a lot. So, this it, it'll be interesting how this plays out early. It, it really is kind of up to Emil to survive this early rush. Although, both players on super slow incomes. So, can only be so rushy, I guess. Yeah. Mimel, yeah, basically brought in his whole card of those SPW 233s. Threes. They are very, very strong, though. Um, as you say, and hopefully he'll get some decent value out of them. Uh, the Marder will be ready to shut them down on the bottom side at least. F uh, FI-156 in the sky, going to get forced off by the Flak 43, so not too much free information for Mamil there. It will likely actually go down. Uh, Pioneer Führer creeping towards the Flammenwerfer, that would be unfortunate if it got flamed out. Yeah, it was interesting to see that Pioneer Führer running forward with the... Uh traction up north there the two three threes oh the flammenwerfer goes down to the pandershrek pandershrek trying to get another shot off there on the two three three will it get it it will i think will it land yeah oh it does nice <laughs> also the panzer Benichtung's further down got the two three three on the road there as well so that was very nice uh, kills for uh, ghosty taking out those early on ig18 also takes out another of the uh, spw two three threes there so Pretty much all of those ones on the top side dealt with already. And the Sturmschützen are actually getting close. Might be able to get a Panzerfaust off. Nah, he's going to fall those back. He was almost very close to be able yeah, to get that off. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was actually huge for Ghosty because if those two three threes survive and get into his back lines, he has no way to stop them. Like, it, it's kind of like, oh, I would almost say it would have been game over right then. So, really impressive from Ghosty preventing it. Because, again, that's big. That's 78 turn's big issue. That's why people that find this deck so exploitable. Yeah, and everything does cost quite a lot. So, like, these Sturmschutz and getting Widowed down by the 2-3-3. Three, three, I'm pretty sure the 2-3-3 three, three is uh, the same cost as a Sturmschutz. Oh, no, it's, like, 10 points less. It's uh, ten, yeah, ten, but it's... But it's still, I mean, that's expensive for one squad of infantry, of course. I mean, you're, uh -huh. you're spending a lot for every single one. Yeah. And yeah, they slap hard, but they don't slap as hard as they used to, right? The game has power crept up, and semi h Germ has not held up in terms of, like, super powerful infantry very well. They're also very dependent on veterancy with the MP44s. For some yes. reason, veterancy, like, <laughs> really massively helps with the accuracy on the MP44 in, like, a big way and makes them super, super strong. But JU87 coming in on the top side will find the kill onto the Stug 3. Very nicely done. Will it take out the T26 as well? It does, Whoa. indeed. Nice double kill. Yeah, that's that's how, that's why JU87s are one of the best AT planes in the game. They're slow enough that you can actually pick up multiple kills in each gun run. Uh, Fox Dota went down on the bottom side to the T26, but meanwhile, on this hill, it has been secured quite dramatically by Mimil. Uh, Panzerstreck unloads, kills the 233, but this infantry is all over the place on this hill, and that's going to be quite difficult for uh, Mimil to deal with. Then again, of course, we've got Ghosty's infantry controlling the reinforcing road there, so uh, these infantry might remain isolated long enough to get surrounded on the front line and then slowly picked off in the long term. Yeah, both players have leaders, so they're not going to get squished in terms of territory. They should hold the territory all right. It's definitely very interesting. Mamil making good ground down south as well, and that's definitely helping him out a lot. Uh, SS Legion already eaten up these Sturm shoots and out in the open, but the Sturm shoots and they're, they're like the only MP44 unit that's like pure MP44 that's actually still pretty good. Like, it yeah. hurts. They hit hard. 13 MP44s. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, it's... Yeah, and for some reason, if they only have like 10, it doesn't feel nearly as devastating. Like the Sturmgruppe out of Gross Deutschland don't feel nearly as devastating as Sturmschutzen out of 78. And the IG finally being finished off in the center. 2-2-2, two, 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 going to get on top of the Sturmschutzen on the bottom side. Minus he's trying to finish off the Pioneer Führer in the open, which would be a nice kill to get rid of some of the veterancy for Mamil, but has lost line of sight since the Sturmschutzen went down. Getting that MG42 in there should really help. The Martyr 2 might take out the Flammover for here. I would say the Martyr 2's oddly positioned. He could put it f to cover off the road much better than he did. It was kind of it's kind of a weird placement actually. Yeah, I mean it needs to just move up slightly so it has line yeah. sight down the side of those buildings for sure. Uh, early 122 coming in for Mimil. Um, the nice thing about the 122 in the 17th SS is it does have a radio, uh, so it can make use of corrected shots from like the Pioneer Führer in this case, uh, but unfortunately the Pioneer Führer not quite close enough to allow corrected shot onto that Marder 2 that he was initially firing at. Now instead going to be aiming at the Flak 43, which is being covered by radio due to the Pioneer Führer on the hill. Yeah, probably trying to open up the air for maybe another GU-87 strike. We do see a Marder 2 there uh, that definitely needs to be taken care of at some point. Up north is SBW-233 finding infantry in the Yellow Forest down there, and the 222 still floating around, although the Panzer Vernichting waiting for that to show its head. Yeah, it seems like uh, Mamil lost a couple of his infantry squads to these Begleitgrens. I swear there was more on this hill, and they seem to have there been was... picked apart. Yeah, there was one other Legionati. He's dead. He was a little further north and got killed off. So, yeah. Definitely interesting. This map... This map is... I, I want to like this map, but... This hill, this major defining hill on the red side, really helps red hold a lot of ground for free with some great lines of sight. Absolutely. And honestly, these hills actually really favor the 17th SS, or sorry, the 78th Sturm into the mid game due to things like IG 33s and, um, of course, the abundance of AT guns and such. So you can get a lot of power projection from these hills once you manage to take them back. And currently, these uh, legionary not lasting too long as the Schutzen open up on them with their double machine gun and the panzer gun. Remember we used to rave about how good double MG42 <laughs> used to be? Like it was some sort of amazing thing. And nowadays it's just like a bit meh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like the standard. Like if you don't have at least yeah. a double MG42, you're kind of yeah. like a meh infantry squad. <laughs> like you're not very... Like think, uh, think panzer gun MG34s are so underperforming. Like they're not fun to use. <laughs> like they're just like, oh, MG34s, that's a shame. Yeah. 
I mean, the the folks that just still do well for their, va their value. Well, um, for 25 points, yes. But when you get up to 30 points and you're only getting MG34s, it's like, wow, I'm mm -hmm. overpaying really bad. Yeah, yeah, indeed. MML running out of HG on his Marta 3. Easy done. That Marta 3 always going to be getting low on ammunition very quickly. Doesn't come with much ammunition on base. The Pioneer Fjord, oh, did manage to get a HG grenade onto the Schutzen, but now being fired at by the 37mm Flak 36. Well, Flak 37, whenever I see those AT guns firing at infantry, it always reminds me of, like, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's that is the same one they used was the a thirty seven mil. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's brutal. It was, that's the brutal. It scene. was it was strikingly more effective in that movie than it is in game. <laughs> oh yeah, strikingly absolutely. so. Probably but, realistically so. So I think if a thirty seven mil explodes in your face, it's probably going to hurt more. This uh, mid area for ML is looking very very sparse. There is not much here at all. Yeah. Uh, the one Flak 38, or the Pack 38, sorry, is uh, kind of trying to hold the line. It does take out the T26. Um, the SBW 222 will be able to kill some of the infantry, but as soon as the Stug starts to make a move forwards, uh, there is going to be uh, plenty of flags to be taken by Ghosty. And meanwhile, the mill is putting points into this bottom side, bringing in the Stug 4 here. And honestly, I'm not sure if there's too much to gain. Like, he, this river kind of makes it awkward to push across here and, and secure these flags. Yeah, it's definitely tough. I mean, he has an op he doesn't know, but I mean, Mr. Ghosty doesn't really have anything here defending that town, that flag in the town right there next to this little salient he's got going. But that's a ballsy play. Like you're you're going pretty unsupported. Will this Pack 38 make it out of here? Oh, it looks like it will. The Martyr 2 lined up for a second and then that was that, I guess. The SPW 222 does go down. Will the Stug push too far? Oh, the Pack 38 goes down to the shoots and just before the Stug rounds the corner. Yeah, so just the outfit of there, they'll get spotted, they'll get taken out. I'll be pretty rough. Mm, they're still hidden at the moment. Ju87 on its way. Stug three out in the open, spotted by this outfitter. Will the outfitter go down before the Ju87 gets the kill? Ah, uh, he's down, but he still sees it. He and still down he sees goes. it. Yeah, the MG42 is further up, had eyes, so it manages to get through with that very nicely done. I did fly straight into the Flak 37 there for a little while, so might end up taking enough damage to go down. But meanwhile, Pack 40 further up is taken out by the MGs. Yeah, and it's easy to forget because we're so used to, like, Maverick on Maverick. These players are balanced and Juggernaut. They're not getting that many points here at the beginning, um, which is why it may feel like they're sitting kind of thin here and there because they haven't gotten that many points yet. Yeah, it's a lot slower style of gameplay. That Schutzen, though, just demolishing the Fox yeah. chat in that transport very, very quickly indeed with the double MG42. Plus the extra rifles there, of course, making a, a good difference. Uh, but that's going to be an extra flag in favour of Ghosty. And now Ghosty sitting on the 1311. Mimil had a really nice start, managed to get into some really good spots, but didn't really well we couldn't really reinforce them properly because of the way that ghosty had got behind him uh, this has to be w233 currently sitting on the hill with no ammo uh, shows how effective that's probably been up there to help reduce some of the numbers of ghosty's inventory but he might want to invest potentially into some art uh, some supply he's bringing the 122 actually really really far forwards there so we might see a supply uh, be brought in just to get value out of that yeah i think he's using the 122 as direct support Looks like he's going to use it as a 2K, you know, HE gun, basically, on yeah. that hill. Also and pretty then, good as an AT as well, obviously, for the, yeah. uh, the Stug here, potentially, if it gets in range. Although the heat round on it is limited to the 1,500 meter range. Yeah. We are in the B phase, though, so both players unlocking a little more, although go uh, Ghosty a little bit more, right? Because he's on this balanced income versus the Juggernaut income. I will say this game is very interesting because it really does show... How much stronger shoots are than Panzergrad. Just that simple three more guys makes them so, seems to make them so much stronger. We see the the shoots in consistently crushing Panzergrens in one on one combat. Yeah, and uh, that's when they're within the 500 meter range, of course. Like a uh, uh, max range, it's just sort of a coin flip as to who gets yeah. the most suppression yeah. first. But uh, yeah, absolutely. At close range, the extra men really do make a big difference because it kind of snowballs when you have that. Um, suppression go down due to those extra rifles. 
Yeah, definitely interesting. I'm not going to lie, I've casted 78th a couple times this season. They've not performed well overall in the stats. I did a stat video. Colonel Koenig put together a whole bunch of stats. And 78th did not perform very well. <laughs> so it's nice to see them doing a little bit better because this division used to be, you know, pretty cream of the crop. Like, not never S tier, but always very strong. And yeah, it's it was always a off. solid pick after bands, for sure. Nowadays, it's uh, definitely sort of middle of the pack. <laughs> it's Well, again, it's just, it's exploitable. I think everyone knows this division well enough that they know how to, you know, pick apart the lack of light AT, pick apart the super expensive infantry, pick apart the lack of air. You know, the, it's got some weaknesses. But what it does have is really it's just got the top quality stuff, right? The best of the best stuff, generally speaking. You can see it in the game so far that Mamil, yeah, he invested the points in the bottom side, didn't really get too aggressive, and now it's allowed Ghosty time to sort of reinforce his bottom side, and the shoots in there are going to probably get a free kill onto this. Pack 38, uh, with the help of the Narswan actually, that's come in on that bottom side as well. Uh, but the nice thing here is Ghosty's managed to develop his position into a 15-9, so he's actually putting the pressure on Mamel quite a lot now. Well, I mean, technically, Ghosty is technically the, the aggressive deck, right? I mean, the longer into C phase we go, you know, after 10 minutes, it's all Mamel advantage from there, right? The first 10 minutes, Ghosty's still in the lead in C phase, but after 10 minutes, then Meal's going to have the income advantage, essentially. Yeah, well, after, like, 20 minutes total. Or, or, unless you're talking about well, phase. I, well, yeah, so, like, in 10 minutes into C phase, they will equal out. Oh, right, yeah. And then every 10 minutes after that would be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just an odd... You know, it was definitely a counter pick. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just we don't see it super-duper often. Although Mamil is well-known for his meme juggernaut decks. Yeah, so we'll have to see if uh, Mamil can kind of stop this double tick because he doesn't want the double tick to happen for too long because then he won't have time to capitalize on his late game income um, but so far he's managed to at least take back the flag with the Sturm Pioneer in the mid but the Schutzen now pushing back forwards uh, more of these armored cars coming on into play we've got the 2-2-2 ripping apart the back 40 and IG-18 further up the 2-3-1 assisting in the mid although the IG-18 just landed a beautiful shot onto the 222 before getting blown up by the IG-33. Infantry guns seem so strong lately. I don't know I know nothing changed but my goodness it feels like they did. I mean they've just always I, been meta haven't they? I get I mean IG-18's coming in out. OB-25s are like god weapons but ig 18 sometimes they're terrible sometimes they're great. Lately they've been great. It's so good. Will this IG-33 shell land hard? Let's find out. Oh, oh, oh it did. Oh. <laughs> That's rough for the 1-2-2 two, two there. Because it's an artillery piece, it's, uh, yeah, it took a lot of stress from that. And a lot of damage. 88 actually ends up being forced to move back. Even though it potentially could have won the engagement there with the IG-33 with a couple more shots. It's yeah, nice. I would have think... Yeah, it would have got two or three shots in before the IG-33 fired again. So he would have suppressed it first. Although... Ghosty fell back anyway, so it became irrelevant from that point, but yeah, interesting. Folk Searcher coming in on the bottom side. The last Folk, Folk Searcher that came in there got one shot out of the transport by the T26, so didn't end up too well. But uh, looks like Mamel here trying to get into a position where he can maybe put pressure on this bottom flag that's currently covered by the MG42. If he can get up onto the hill there uh, a little bit further forwards, he, he will probably apply enough pressure, I think, to get the front line over the flag. Yeah, that's definitely a good position. A lot of times we see a lot more fighting happening over this hill on the bottom because it overlooks both flags down south, and it lets you exert a lot of control over those two positions if you can capture that hill comfortably. All right, Stug4 slowly chipping the Schutzen uh, when it had line of sight. AG33, though, currently fire positioning on this bottom side. Looks like he's trying to make way for the Sturmschutzen to come in, which have now been... Committed to this bottom side. Two Sturmschützen Schützen heading up the hill. Sturmschützen heading for the location where the IG is currently firing and wasting a lot of ammunition. Uh, it's, it's always a classic when you see these uh, IGs be fire positioned at a location and then the player who does it forgets. And forgets. Then oh, yeah, yeah. Uses up all the ammunition. It happens a lot with the Griller as well. And the Griller has less ammo, so it's even worse. Yeah, it's always rough. Because you can only, you should only, I really think you should only do it for three or four shots. Because at that point, the opponent's either falling back or they're dead, right? No soft target is surviving four yeah. shots from an IG-33. Absolutely. So, you know. And now we have 
two Sturm shoots and a Schutzen coming in down south. This Volkdeutsch, oh, this poor man. He has so little chance. It's kind of hilarious. In the firing line of the Sturm Schutzen coming into play. The folks that you got a good volley off initially. But with but the second Sturm Schutzen, yeah, yeah, that's going to be rough. <laughs> Here Although Mamil is Mamil is targeting the first one, like he gave the Volkdeutsch a specific attack order, so it wouldn't switch targets. Mm -hmm. It's important to do for newer players when you have two targets, pick one so they'll actually pin one down and then p target the other one. Yeah, you're gonna manually micro those engagements for sure. Est the one two two, nicely done by Mamil here. Currently trying to indirect fire the IG thirty three so that he doesn't get direct fired by it back. Uh, JU-88 actually being invested into that, but the SDK Z71 going to force that away. JU-87 coming in in the meantime to try and take out Nigel, but that's not going to work. And uh, yeah, all this AA is enough, more than enough, to stop these. Even shoot down the JU-87 there. Oh. That was only being targeted by the Flak-43. That was some pretty good hits. Well, Flak 43s are so much better than Flak 36. It's it's kind of nuts, actually. They just have a higher they have a higher rate of fire. That's it. That's the only difference, and they're just obscenely better. So, folks, don't you? Double teamed. Get, getting wrecked by the Schutzen, the Glyke lens. Uh, this bottom side has been completely overrun by Ghosty's infantry, and as we move on, unless. Mimil can secure these close ranged engagements with the um, legionary, then he's going to be having a bad time. Does he have like a card of legionary in phase he's, C? He put he put the second card in phase C. Yes, yeah, so that that's is what happened. So definitely, he's out right now. Definitely making him struggle. And now we see the Ju 188 nuke bomber out of 78 Sturm with its two 1,000 kilogram bombs. This is always like. 78 Sturm has very little air force, but then it carries this really cost-efficient, super powerful, like, nuke bomber that you have never have any AA for. <laughs> yeah, Sturm shoots and absolutely destroy the transport coming up the hill there. The bombs hit nicely on the IG-33. Units just getting dismantled across the map. Ghosty doing a great job here. Schutzen are going to come up on the 233 in the center as well. Get off their close-range AT. Take oh. that out for free. Really, really nasty losses in the last, like, two minutes there for Mimil. Does manage to get off a bo bombing strike on the bottom side, at least. Get some value out of that, finally. We'll take out the IG-33. Hey, radiates a nice bomber. It's very fast. Has a good loadout. Gets in, gets out in a hurry. Especially once it drops the bombs, it moves even faster. Like, it's a, it's a very solid bomber. Yeah, it's also extremely resilient. Um, yeah. with the highest resilience stats. Um, Sturm Pies going to be securing the center there. Still 14, 10, 13, 11. Mamil managing to at least stop double tick temporarily. But that's all it seems to be so far is just temporary um, hold across the map. Uh, whilst it seems like the disparity in units is, is hugely in favor of, of Ghosty. He's managing to get a lot of value out of his units so far, which is something that you like to see for the 70 inch Sturm, because usually oh, yeah. it's the opposite. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's C phase now, so can Mamil leverage his massive income to swing himself back in this game? We see reinforcements pouring in, but that's always like people, oftentimes when I make like beginner division deck videos, people are always like, well, what about 70 inch Sturm? I don't think this is an easy beginner div. Like, you have to play it really well, because otherwise, if you don't get tons of value out of every single unit, you're going to lose. You're going to get overwhelmed by cheaper infantry. Yeah, I think these days, sort of like the spammy decks are probably easier to play. You know, things like Tatra and like... <laughs> it's the first Just, one that came to mind with like the 38Ts Hestung. and all of the... Yeah, Festung, yeah. Dunk, 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 and yeah. exactly, yeah, off-map <laughs> infantry spam. Like, yep. Those ones are like relatively easy to play. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, 78 Sturm, it requires a lot of skill. Like, it's very easy to get just attritioned out and run over by fast-moving, cheap armored cars and infantry. Here comes this JU-188 again. This thing is so frustrating when you play against this deck. It's got very good resilience. It will absolutely eviscerate everything yeah. in an area. Like, all these units will die. The big problem is, and some people might be like, oh, why isn't Mamil buying AA? Well, you don't usually buy AA against 78 Sturm because it's not like 
exactly the, the primary core of their like division but nope. you still have to worry about this uh, this ju one eight coming in but then like you don't want to like over invest into dealing with it because otherwise you you look, kind of lose value on the ground in these sort of important infantry engagements so yeah that's that's why he's managing to get through with these bombing strikes that are being very very effective right now the other thing that's a problem for mamil is because he has lost a, a lot of ground early on these uh, legionary that he's going to be able to use to win close range engagements later on won't be able to get into the close range in the first place and uh, that will stop him from from getting decent value yeah and i, I would actually say even the, the thing is with breast west as foresty as it looks it's actually a lot of yellow forest i think this is the most yellow forest in the game like even more than cell cell is a lot of green forest Breast West is mostly yellow, like if you really look close, and Legionati are not actually that great in Yellow Forest. Sturm shoots and are incredible in Yellow Forest. So yeah. I could I definitely see Ghosty having thought that through. That is a that's a thought process I could see him having, because the dude plays pretty next level when he plays his game. J U one eighty eight going down to the AA there too. Oof. And I think Or J U eighty eight. Yeah, there's definitely a good chance that Ghosty on his like tier of like divisions on this map, it has like 78 stand pretty high um, because of that. Um, ha like the utilization of, of yellow cover is exactly um, what 78 stand loves to do. E not even with its just its infantry, but also with like the Marders and the Nas Horns. Like they they benefit a lot from utilizing yellow cover. Um, so yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and I mean, Ghosty did get lucky with the roll of the red side of the map. I mean, it is better. There's no question about it that this map is pretty asymmetrical. Um, but he's played it really well. That's not to take away from his skill in playing his division here on this map. Especially, I mean, it's 17th SS. This is a good division. There's no getting around that fact. And now Nagel having a go at the 88 in the mid. I'm not sure that's going to end too well for the Nasson. As it I thought he was going to make it. I thought he was actually <laughs> going to live through a game. No! Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Nago. He they tried. have to die. Aces have to die, otherwise the game breaks when you try to <laughs> quit. It does, it does. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree. <laughs> it just shatters into a million pieces. They're just so yellow on the map, they're just, you, can't, you can't not kill them. Yes, you have to. The game won't allow them to live. No, yeah, things not going well here. 17-7 with only five minutes remaining here for Emil, if he, unless he turns it around. And things aren't feeling very turnaroundy right now. Yeah, it hasn't really got better since Mamil has got into phase C. <laughs> it seems no. to have just got worse. <laughs> no, it has not improved whatsoever. No position feels like he's on the verge of cracking it open or anything. Mamil, uh, Ghosty is now turtled up. Here's a Nevelwerfer up north hitting that 88. Oh, the next fun part of the 70-inch term come into play. Yeah. Can enough rockets land on target to kill the 88? Oh, that last one was close, yeah. but not quite. All you need two Nebelwerfers. You need two. Always uh, get two. Unless you're lucky. They get they kill everything if there's two of them, and they kill next to nothing with one. It always makes me upset. <laughs> it's not Katusha. It's not Katusha level of bad, but it, they're definitely far less exciting in singles. Oh, Ju-188 coming in. Here it comes. He's coming in for another one, but 18-6 uh, for Mamil. Oh, sorry for Ghosty now, and uh, that is rough. And this, this, these 1,000 kilogram bombs are going to do a lot of damage. Yep. The fans of Grenz running. <laughs> Get out of there, man! He's still in the transport. That's even worse. <laughs> like, oh no! I actually, allowed wow, them to survive. Yeah. Wow. Nice little play there. Next level tech. Just far enough away to. Get unloaded not, instead of uh, destroyed. Yeah. I mean, that was pure <laughs> luck, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's no way you plan that. <laughs> There's no way. Neville yeah. for 300 mil now responding and missing. Oh. Where is that going? Is it was there... going to where these infantry used to be, and they push forward. Uh, it's just it's strange, though, like that you would yeah. use them for that. Uh, I don't know if like a He's Neville in, 42 why... is worth like using for. I don't know. Like, for me, oh, if you're going to do that, maybe just fire, like, three, and then fire three, like, somewhere else. Yes, I would agree with that, yeah. He should have broken it up. Should have um, split that shot up, and, like, he could have hit two sides of the forest, even. It probably wouldn't fire that fast, but that. he was going for this push. A martyr on the bottom side, literally one meter oh. from the Sturm Schutz and oh. getting a Panzer strike, or Panzer Faust. The Nebelver for 41 responded and almost killed the 42. Oh, he didn't move it. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Tiss, <laughs> tiss, tis, Mamil. 
Tis, tis, not mo not microing your Neville or fur away. The lazy micro almost getting yeah? completely punished there. Mars horns. Potentially going to look for some Panzer ground kills here in the transports, but only one minute left in this game. Emil, is there anything that he can do at this point? Ah, uh, I'm trying to like where he can even go. Ghosty has put all his infantry in like perfect positions now as well, like that just cover off reinforcement roads that go directly to any flag. Like this northern push has been absolutely destroyed. Down south, the Nazhorn is cutting off the transport route. The Pack 40 does get the Nazhorn, so maybe open up down here. Martyr 3 misses the Martyr 2 in this key moment and has fallen back. Oh no. I mean, the Martyr 2 has missed like three shots of that range. Four shots now. <laughs> So well, the, it's the sight, Martyr 2 it, should have got the... I guess it is it sight damage. It has sight yeah. damage. Yeah, right? That decreases accuracy, correct? There I, it is. I thought it just affected optics, but... I don't know. It's, we we'll... all know the accuracy <laughs> formula in this game is questionable at best. <laughs> well, 13-11. The mill has put stuff in the right places to slow it down, but still 30 seconds left. Another, yeah, JU-188 coming in. 12-12. But... He has the 12-12 for like a quarter second. Won't last long He's as that Panzergren gets bombed. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I, I, me personally, in my head, I've created a rule of thumb that every unit should land a hit after three shots. And if a unit misses after three, I start losing my crap. <laughs> that is how yeah. it works for me, at least Fair in my enough. head. I think Fair that's enough. reasonable. Honestly, Mimil has done a good job here of chunking back at some of these units with like all of this infantry spam onto these flags, but. It doesn't look like it's going to be enough, quick enough. He lost too many uh, points early on. The, t the tickets have gone down. Three seconds left, yeah. and that's going to be We it. can see the beginnings of his juggernaut idea mm -hmm. coming to fruition, but just not soon enough, unfortunately, for him. Didn't break past that 30-minute mark you were talking about. Yeah, and well, that's, I mean, basically, you know, it's not the level of Maverick versus Balanced or something, but when you're playing Balanced versus Juggernaut, that's kind of what you have to do because Juggernaut will get way more points than you eventually. So you you got to do something quick. Yeah, well, there we go. 28 minutes, 42 seconds. Not long enough for Mimil to get the comeback. 2,930 kills to 2,800 or 2,080 losses for Ghosty. Very, very efficient KD. Um, and I think we saw that throughout as the sort of unit disparity started to mount massively in Ghosty's favor as that went on. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah. I mean, Ghosty did what he had to do with this division. It is strong if you can. If you can use your units well, if you're great at your micro, yeah, this division is phenomenal. I mean, it's got shoots and are basically what Panzergren's always want it to be. Like, actually really good. Like, worth 30 points. But it's easy to get overwhelmed when all of your units cost 30, more, 30 or more points, you know. Really no standouts here in the KDs. Some Sturm shoots and did some cool stuff. Pack 40 here or there. Mostly on Ghosty's side. Mamil's got nothing yeah. very notable, and that's not super surprising. His JU-87 had its fun little gun run at the beginning, which was very exciting. It always is when those things get a good gun run in, uh, but then, of course, met its ultimate demise. It's just interesting how like most of the inventory kills are on the side of Ghosty, and then all, and then it seems like Mamil basically got no value out of his legionaries or anything, so yeah, that really, really sucked for him. Um, yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? No, good game to both players. Definitely uh, definitely an interesting one to see. All right, well, that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.